All right, Chris, I wanted to talk to you about the RTX 3080 Ti that's coming out right around the corner and the RTX A5000. Both those GPUs are releasing here in June. And, I, you know, I've got to say I'm pretty excited. Can't wait to get one out, get one to try some stuff out on it. Um, uh, first off and foremost, uh, you know, one of them is a workstation card. One of them is a gaming card, right? Two completely different beasts at two completely different prices. But at the, real the reality is at the end of the day, they're very similar GPUs. So like a, a, a 3080 Ti is going to perform very similarly to uh, an A5000. You think, well, how can that be with that price difference? You know, a 3080 Ti is about, let's say, 800 bucks, right? And versus a uh, RTX A5000, you're looking closer to like 2,500, 3,000. Um, and that's just really the price you pay when you jump into the enterprise gaming server world, right? Is that you, um, you know, you unlock um, very specific features that are very valuable for for lots of um, for lots of interesting applications, say like Plex, or for um, simulation, or for SolidWorks, or for rendering, or for visualizer, or CUDA cores, or CUDA rendering, ray tracing, and so on. When you jump into the workstation realm, but at a price, right? So. Here's one thing that I want to convey is don't buy a GPU for the sake of spending a lot of money on a GPU, right? Just because there's scalpers out there marking up the 3080 Ti's or the 3090 Ti's to some astronomical value doesn't mean that spending that equivalent amount of money on, say, a card that's in stock, that's MSRP, so like a workstation card, is going to give you more performance, um, especially when playing games, right? Um, generally speaking, workstation cards are about 10% slower than their counterpart gaming cards. And then they run their own specific drivers for their specific applications that they support, like SolidWorks or Visualize, or Maya or Rhino or you know so on. So there's there's this uh, balance of scales essentially, right? That you know you have to out, you have to outweigh you have to weigh the benefits, right, in each category. And if you find yourself doing more engineering work or more like enterprise work on your computer, then maybe a workstation card's right for you. But if you're more of a gamer, stick with those gaming RTX 30 series cards, right? So just generally speaking, if we look at some of the specs here, the 3080 Ti is loaded up with 12 gigs of RAM, which is pretty dang good for a, for a, uh, a, a gaming card. Um, but the counterpart there, the RTX A5000, is loaded up with 24 gigs of RAM with the same memory bandwidth. So pretty impressive. And certainly as an engineer, I can totally use 24 gigs, like hands down, no problem. Um, but if we look a little bit deeper into some of the specs, you know, it's like how many monitors does each one support and at what resolution can can your graphics card support all those monitors? Um, usually the workstation cards have a little edge on that um, as far as like quantity of, say, like 8K monitors or just quantity of monitors in general. Um, here we're going to look at CUDA cores and RT cores just here real quick. Now, uh, I think there's some stuff online where this has been published, but nothing straight from NVIDIA. Um, all of these just say yes or the... the, the, um, the um, the specs are generic between the 3080 and the 3080 Ti. But um, what we do notice is that it has an increased number of CUDA cores, which is definitely gonna help with your ray tracing. So any RT games, any games that are running RT, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see an improvement here or DLS, you're gonna see an improvement there too. Um, but when we when we compare the the data sheet for the RTX A5000, which has some known values out there, we can get a good idea about what to expect out of the 3080 Ti. Although the the um, CUDA cores are significantly lower in the A5000, from 8200 to 8700 in the in the 3080, and then 10,000 in the 3080 Ti. <laughs> um, you know, I, I still think there's some some really good benefits. These cards are still very similar as far as memory interface and memory bandwidth and so on. Um, it does say that that this GPU will support, uh, let's see, four 4K monitors, four 5K monitors, or two 8K monitors, right? So we can see that there um, in the spec sheet. I would be surprised to see those same results in the 3080 Ti, but maybe, you know, I don't know, hard to say. So... Um, you know that's that's kind of my take on the on the two graphics cards. You know, I did some research and I found some some A6 A5000s rather um, advertised in like the thirty three hundred dollar range, but I think that's the scalper price and that's just the the um, you know the the elevated price due to the chip shortage. I think the MSRP is going to be closer to twenty five or twenty six hundred dollars, which makes it a prime CAD card. I mean, that's like upper echelon CAD card. And I think a lot of people would be really happy with that, especially 24 gigs. Loaded up a file for my customer, one of my customers, 
last week and was able to tap into 14 gigs in one instance and then like 26 gigs in another instance. That was like an extreme case scenario. We were intentionally trying to break things. But, you know, 24 gigs is quite a bit. It's quite a bit there. So, hey, look, I, I hope you enjoyed this little review on the RTX A5000 and the 3080 Ti comparison. Um, both are going to be great cards. One's workstation, one's gaming. Pick your poison. Hey, I can't appreciate you enough for watching my videos, subscribing, and liking. Um, I can't do these without you, and I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Stay curious and fight on.